Um, I'm Julia McMillan. I'm a professor of pediatrics at Johns Hopkins. I'm Brandon Englorn. I'm one of the pediatric chief residents at Johns Hopkins Hospital. And I'm Jamie Lavish, and I'm the other chief resident at Johns Hopkins. The Harriet Lane Handbook was first developed in uh, 1953 by several pediatric residents here at Johns Hopkins who wanted to share um, pearls and tidbits that they had learned as pediatric residents and felt would be interest, uh, interesting and helpful to their colleagues both here and uh, in other institutions. But the first few editions were just a loose leaf notebook. Um, and it was uh, years later, early 1960s, that the first actual publication was created um, by Mosby, which was, I think, then later bought by Elsevier. Um, so the, those, since then, it's been published every three years, uh, as you'll hear, by the pediatric house staff. I remember when I started pediatric residency, and we were using the book and we had all of our colored tabs that marked off what our favorite pages were. Um, and I think that's changing a lot now. People are using tablets, people are going to the internet, people are using their phones, and that was something that I think changes in the next edition. Um, going from a green tab in your book to your favorites on your phone for the tables that you want to look for, I think posed a challenge and an exciting change for the next edition. So our residents are our chapter editors. And they have a chapter advisor, so we're fortunate here to have many leaders in the fields be the chapter advisor for specific chapters. So it's a little bit different in both how it's made and who it's for compared to some other books. So it's truly made by our residents and we do it once every three years as the updated edition. Um, and we're very proud of all the work that they put into it. Our residents are providing this book that's then used by pediatric residents, family medicine residents, and outpatient clinics emergency rooms, um, so it really is used by a wide variety of people that are taking care of children. One of the most exciting aspects is that a lot of the books are known by their cover, and so they're referred to by their color. So the last edition was yellow, and ours is going to be the first multicolored cover, <laughs> which is exciting, so I think it'll have a different spin to the color. Um, and then one of the other exciting pieces is that each year, there are many updates that are made with new guidelines, and so we have many new things that have come out since the last edition. And so one of them, for instance, is the way you categorize people in mental health for different disabilities has changed with a new book called the DSM-5, and so that's just one of many new changes that are going to be in this book, our new guidelines. We've also worked to try more multimedia, knowing that the book is used on tablets and the internet. Uh, we have lots of links in all of the chapters. We also have information that's online only, so everyone's white coats aren't being held down with extra information that they can go to on another source. Um, and even as far as having videos, links to videos to be embedded for, for example, the procedure chapter to really help change this book and make it a little different. Other than the residents who, uh, who write the chapters, revise the chapters every three years with guidance from their faculty advisors. Um, the pharmacist who's been involved with this book for decades is Carlton Lee. Um, and Carlton uh, is meticulous in his review of every single drug that's included in the formulary. The accuracy, he's pristine in the way he uh, makes certain that not just the dosages are correct, but also that the potential side effects and, and the um, uh, restrictions on the use are all up to date. Um, so that I think, I guess nothing's perfect, but uh, it, people really can trust the formulary as well as the individual chapters that are, as has been said, updated to reflect current guidelines.